to it out and about with Rob today. I'm going to look for um, some pits. I know um, in Hampshire, not known for its mining, but I think there was mining in the Neolithic period and there was mining for chalk and flint. And, uh, I've noticed on all the survey maps there's a lot of pits. And, uh, it says they're disused pits. So, chicken stir fry should be interesting it's quite windy today so uh, I might have to speak up occasionally so come with me this is where I am today Cuffington Down on the east side of Hampshire uh, looking on the Ordnance Survey maps there's a lot of disused pits around here chalk pits so uh, yeah it should be interesting if anyone wants to read this they can pause it Said, it's extremely windy today and also extremely wet although the weather looks rather pleasant now yesterday it was an absolute deluge so the ground is very slippery underfoot and this time I wore my waterproof boots <laughs> ah. so I'll just flip you around and see where I'm gonna go Busy road here, it's Love Dean Lane, for those who want to know. It's very picturesque around here. An old pumpkin there. <laughs> Another pumpkin hiding there. Right, here we come. We've got to cross this lane, go up the footpath over there. See you on the other side. Being lane for a little B road, it is quite a busy one. Leads up to Clamfield that way, Waterloo Field down there. I just noticed uh, I can understand why a uh, Neolithic man would have uh, dug pits here. So much flint everywhere. So, uh yeah, it's probably a rich source of it around here. And uh, like I say, looking at the uh, Ordnance Survey, there's an awful lot of them around this way. So, just curious, I got around that river. As I said, very windy. country lane here to uh, get to where I need to go. I don't really want to say exactly where it is because the place I want to visit I'm not sure is uh, I'm not sure I'm actually allowed there. It might be private land so I can find a little way in there. Just to have a look, see what it is, get my curiosity uh, cured. Cure. That sounds quite close actually. Just over there somewhere. So, uh, so the farmer's got a rabbit pie. Oh, that's a shooting crows. I don't think it's only shotgun fire. 
That actually sounds like rifle fire as well. Coming from over there somewhere. Near it coming. And I've just got to the place where one of these chalk pits is. It's a pretty damn sturdy barbed wire fence that goes around. So that could be chalk pit number one. I'm going to go up this lane a little bit and there's uh, another place up there. But looking on Google Earth, it looks a little bit easier to get to. So fingers crossed. We'll have a look. Okay, I've made it into this little wooded area. It's, uh, you know, it's got a fence around it, but not a very effective one. So. Apparently there's a pit, disused pit in here somewhere. So I'm gonna uh, have a look, see what I can find. And then maybe, conditions are right, have a little fry up, a cup of coffee. Obviously there is some activity goes on in here. Hopefully not today. Well, I don't know, this is the pit, disused pit. Whether it's just a great big hole in the ground, I can't tell. And again, if it was disused, it would be, all be overgrown anyway, I would have thought. Let's venture in a little further. Well, I think this is definitely it. Definitely a hole in the ground. Like chalk up on the top. Yeah. Rabbit holes. Yes, this could be the pit. Looks like it could be. Yeah, there's quite a few of these holes dotted around uh, East Hampshire countryside. Who knows, I might visit some more sometime. I just wanted to have a look at one. Because uh, where, uh, where I live in Portsmouth, Portsdown Hill, one side of it, they used to do a lot of chalk mining there as well. You've got chalk pits there. When you look up to the north of the city, you can actually see the, it almost looks like the White Cliffs of Dover, but it's, uh, it's the chalk pits, Portsdown Hill. So yeah, there's probably a lot of these died around. I think I'll find somewhere to have a little uh, Thai chicken stir fry and a cup of coffee. Found a nice little spot to sit down and have a cup of coffee. Stir fry. I've just looked up. <laughs> Make sure there's no widow makers out there because, like I say, the wind is really strong today. And, uh, yeah, time to get some coffee. On. Got my little out life stove again. Excellent little stove. So I'll just get some coffee on. It's a bit chilly. There you go. Put the water on for the coffee. There's much of a chance of fire starting here today. So, uh, so wet. Like I say, it absolutely poured down yesterday. Chucked it down all day long. Ready. 
these coffees are really frothy. Uh, I like to measure the water, but even I still end up with a little bit left because of all the frothiness. Very tranquil spot. This now, there's a country lane just over there. But since I've been here, only one car has gone by. So it is, uh, and it is a country lane where there is only room for one car to go down. So, and I don't know where it actually leads that way. But hey, this is a nice tranquil spot. I like it. So this is what I've got today. In the reduced section, one pound ninety one. It's new, it's a green Thai chicken stir fry. Sounds challenging. Let's give it a go, see what it tastes like. Got my mate back again. Back always goes with me when I'm on a little expedition. Right, so we've got to cook the chicken first. According to plan, got a sachet in there too. Interesting. Got to give this a good cook because it's raw chicken. So I'll give that a little bit. Give it a little squirt of the old olive oil as well. Give it some lubrication. Yeah, so while that cooking away a little bit of a chance to say if you uh, like the videos I'm making I've only made this is my second one but if you like it give me a little subscribe and uh, a little like maybe that would be very nice and very welcome and uh, yeah so I'm gonna do a few more of these sort of expeditions as I said in the last video Get out and about. That's what it's all about. Getting out and about, seeing the countryside. Not necessarily the country, just the countryside. There's some things in the city as well that are pretty good, worth a visit. But whether or not I'll be able to have a cookout, I don't know. But uh, cookouts are great. I love cookout. Chicken's cooking good. Smells good. There's no dogs around, they'll be straight here, I think. Right, I think I'm going to add the vegetables. Don't worry, I'll be taking all my rubbish with me. Leave no trace. Always leave no trace. Where's Buck? Where's Buck? Got it. Yeah, that definitely looks like Thai, some sort of Thai. Green curry sauce. Lovely, lovely. Love it. Definitely smell those uh, Thai spices. Just let it simmer for a bit. There's a lot there, there's more than I thought. Blimey. Just want to make 
make sure that chicken cooks through. So I'll leave that to simmer for a bit. Just like that. Ooh. And there it is. Bubbling away nicely. Can we turn it down just a fraction? Yeah. Good stuff. Like Thai food. It's very nice. Don't like the look of that though, it looks like a bit of onion skin or something. Right, the rest of it. Boat's my boat, I must say. So this is the little spot where I'm uh, having my fry up. There's some sort of uh, plantation over there. I don't know what they're growing. But yeah, it's very nice. There's a horse went by just a minute ago. Didn't see me. But then again, they weren't looking for me, were they? So, yeah. It's starting to look a bit grey. It's nearly ready, I think. Looks bloody grey. Food's ready, but again, same as last week, forgot my plate. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to eat it out of the frying pan. That looks good. I can hear another horse coming. Mmm. That is good. Oh yeah. Those spices are nice, those Thai spices. What was it called? Green Thai Chicken Stir Fry. Marvellous. Chicken Stir Fry and a Toffee Nut Coffee. Out in the wilderness. When I'm out and about. That's what it's all about, after all, isn't it? Being out and about. Yeah, quite interesting uh, those uh, chalk pits. I just wish I could have got to the one that was over there. Because that looked like a pretty deep hole. And, uh, yeah, it would have been good to have a look at that one. But, it was surrounded by barbed wire. And it looked quite new, that barbed wire fence, I must say. So, um, mm. I didn't realise there was this much. I did bring a tin of all day breakfast, just in case I couldn't find anything, so I stopped off in Tesco's on the way here. Caught myself some green Thai curry stir fry. Mmm. Definitely one for the future. Will that hit the spot? That away. Shotguns and rifles. Yes. Just saw a van go by the road there. The lane over there is all blocked off. Yeah. Guns are going great. Right. That was lovely. Still got a bit of coffee to drink. Still got the guns. Getting very close, they sound very close actually. So it's time to start packing away and then uh, get going. And I'll leave no trace, of course. Right, here we go. So I'm just going to finish off my coffee. I'm all packed away except for my tarp. And I'll be on my way. That's where I was. Sitting on there, my 
that's where I had my gas stove there, my out knife, and my bag was there, and I've left no trace, which is the way it should be. Wherever you go out into the wilderness, always take your rubbish home with you. That's the way to do it. Put some King Alfred's cakes there. I do believe they make good, uh, good, for, good for fire starting because they smolder for a long time. Also, someone left the trace as well. Today I wore my uh, walking boots, my waterproof walking boots. There you go. I think that was a very wise move. Some rose hips there. And it's a rose hip jam. Made some in the past, but uh, not for a long time. <laughs> out and about with me today and uh, joining me on my cook up and, uh, and I'll see you on the next adventure if you like what I've done give me a subscribe give the video a like that'd be most appreciated see you soon bye